All right, guys, I'm very excited. I just got an email saying that my bike delivered. They said it wasn't gonna come until Monday, but it looks like it just showed up on my porch and uh, I'm super excited to get this bike. So let me just show you my old bike real quick here, hanging. It's a GT Avalanche, really old, it's like 15 years old. Pretty much everything is shot. The shifters don't work anymore. Uh, I was thinking about updating those and getting them working, but um, I have not done that yet. So I decided to just go and get a new bike, or at least look. And somebody told me about this company, Bikes Online, and they sell this bike called a Polygon. So I ended up getting the Polygon D6. Ooh, look at it right there. Bikes Online. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to share my excitement because I've been wanting a new bike for a long time. This is a full suspension bike. It's the D6, it's called, and uh, it's pretty darn awesome for the money. It's a very affordable full suspension mountain bike, and I'm by no means a professional. I'm a decent rider. I used to ride a lot back in the day, and I'm just trying to get back into it, and uh, I'm super excited to check out this bike. All right, guys, let's bring this thing inside and see what it looks like. I'm excited, man. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you can see in the box there. Can I see? Oh, bike. This thing is amazing. That's what it looks like inside the box. Well, this is how it comes shipped. It's got that cardboard around the tire, cardboard around the forks, and it's got the foam on the wheel there. It looks like they used some Velcro there to zip tie or Velcro things together. And yeah, we got some more Velcro down there. Well, something tied there. Some nice disc brake action. Nice little toolkit. Got some pedals. We have the owner's manual here, seat post user manual, got the fork manual, rear derailleur, hydraulic disc brake, and then of course we have this. This is going to show us how to put it together. Well, you could watch this video here and it'll show you how to assemble it because the basic assembly is going to be the same. So overall the assembly was really easy and just to be clear, this is the 2020 Polygon Siskiyou d6 dual suspension mountain bike and i paid uh twelve hundred dollars for this sucker unbelievably affordable considering how awesome this bike is and it actually comes with this nice little tool kit here to put it together it's got 120 millimeters of travel the bike is fairly lightweight it has a shimano m6000 10 speed drivetrain so it's basically just a 10 speed there's only the one gear up front 10 in the back, which range from 11 to 42 teeth. 42 is enough for climbing, and 11 is enough for going pretty darn fast. It also has Shimano MT201 hydraulic disc brakes. It has a Trans X dropper post, which I didn't even know what that was until I started reading about it. Basically, there's a little lever on the handlebar, as you'll see in a second right here, and it works like an office chair, basically. Like you pull the lever and like the air just releases out of it. So you can just lower the seat post like on the fly. And what's so cool about that is when you're going down steep hills and things like that, you really want to get over that rear tire as much as possible. And you could lower the seat out of the way. So it's great for doing tricks and, you know, steep, um, you know, climbs and, and things like that going downhill. The handlebar is a 760 millimeter alloy handlebar. So it's pretty darn wide handlebar. Hey, Greybeard over there. So you can see I almost have it assembled. I just got to put the front wheel on. And the back wheel actually has a boost through axle, which is 148 millimeters. So you have to use an Allen key to get that off, as you will see in a few minutes. And this is just a closer look at the quick release for the front wheel, which is very convenient because a lot of mounts for, you know, when you're storing it or if you want to get it in your car, it's uh, just easy to take the front wheel off and then you could usually fit the bike wherever you're going to put it and um, just make sure you have that tight. 
The bike also comes with a five-year warranty on the frame and a full manufacturer's warranty on all the parts, you know, so like the Shimano parts and things like that. All the warranties are intact. So here you can see it took me about a half hour or so to get this bike together, and you can see it's a pretty darn large bike. It's definitely much bigger than my other bike, and here's just a closer look. So because the shocks are air shocks, you actually do need a pump to put the proper pressure in the shock by default. So what you have to do is you have to set the sag. So I bought that pump, I will link below. But basically what you gotta do is you gotta adjust the sag it's called. So when you sit on the bike, the suspension compresses just naturally and you need to dial that in. Now what's recommended is approximately about 20 to 30% of the travel on the suspension is what you should have for sag. Now, obviously this is debatable and, and things like that, and depending on, basically what I had to do is I had to add a lot of pressure. I had to add, make it all the way up to 200 PSI, and then that gave me about, you know, 20% sag. Once I got the suspension adjusted, I um, had to put my shoes on and take this thing out for a ride. So I ended up getting these 510s. These are really good shoes, apparently, from what I heard, with these new flat pedals. In the past, I was using toe clips, which you basically would just shove your foot in there and then crank like a strap down. Nowadays, a lot of the mountain bikes just have these flat pedals, which is what this bike has. And I gotta say, these shoes are awesome. They're very uh, supportive, and you can see how it fits on the pedal quite well. It's got a nice soft rubber bottom. And uh, let's check her out. So the suspension works really good, I would say. I mean, 120 millimeters is a lot of travel, especially compared to what I was used to on my old GT. So I know there's definitely bikes out there that have way more travel than that these days as far as downhill bikes and, and stuff like that. And uh, you know, there's better quality suspension, of course, but for $1,200, I really thought that this would be a good place for me to start. And I gotta say, the bike performs amazing. The brakes are awesome. The gears work really well. The suspension soaks up like everything, uh, you know, 10 times better than I expected, to be honest with you. I really didn't think it would work that good. I can just pedal over roots and stuff, and the suspension just like soaks up everything as I'm pedaling. And uh, I was never able to do that on my, my old hardtail GT. And, you know, it is a little bit awkward at first with those big wheels. It did take me a little time to get used to turning the bike. Um, it's a little bit slower at first compared to the shorter wheels and due to the fork, you know, rake, the front wheel is just a little further out than on my old bike. So I'm very fortunate that near my house, I was able to, you know, make some trails. Uh, there's this woods and I, it's a lot of fun making trails. All I really did was rake and um, you know, it's, it's just so much fun. You actually make the trail and then you ride it, you know, what you created. And uh, I was having a lot of fun making trails through the woods here and the neighbors are all cool. Nobody really cares that I'm in here. So I figured uh, until I get yelled at, I will just continue to make trails and have fun. And you know, trying to climb hills and stuff. I'm like, I'm really out of practice and my wheel just slipped there. The tire actually slipped. I might've made it otherwise. I did make it once, but now the trail's a little bit wet. So I haven't been able to make this hill. I also have these gravel piles that I was having some fun on. They're just like whoop de doos you know? It took me a while to be able to make it up that hill at the end there. It took me probably 10 tries or so. I had to carry just a lot of speed through these whoops in order to make it up that hill. You know, it was cool. It's just, it's a, you know, a lot of fun. The, the best part about mountain biking, in my opinion, is it's like fun exercise. You know, it's, it's really difficult. And like I said, making the trails is also a lot of fun. It's like you, you take a break from mountain biking for a little while, you know, make a trail and then you ride the new trail. 
I was out here with the kids a bunch of times and they were helping me and having a good time playing in the woods. So it was a great activity to do with the kids as well as far as making the trails and stuff like that. And uh, they feel like they're, you know, part of the fun. But I got to say, man, this bike is really awesome. Um, really, really enjoying it. Definitely looking forward to going to some mountain bike parks and things like that. I'm not too far from Vernon, New Jersey, and they have an awesome mountain bike park there. I couldn't even come close to making this hill. Way too steep, way too slippery. And here we are just heading back home. Bam! Oh, just popped my tire. Oh, really? That sucks. I just hit that sharp rock with my back tire. Oh well. I guess I'm done for the day. I'm gonna have to patch that. Get another tube or whatever. All right, so I got a new tube to replace the one I popped and I'm just gonna clean the bike off real quick. And this is just part of the deal when it comes to mountain biking, guys. You're gonna get a flat tire if you've never done it before. I just wanted to show you really quick how easy it is to, you know, change a flat tire. It's really not that bad. Those are the lock switches on the fork to lock out the fork. Cool little bell for if you're on the like a rail trail or something. So anyways, you just got to use the tool that was provided to take out the uh, axle. There's an axle on the back. There it is right there. And once you take that out, you know, the wheel pretty much comes off. You just have to pull the chain a little bit out of the way. And that's what it looks like. Now here's the inner tube and notice that blue little tool that comes with it. You use that tool to pry off the tire. But you got to make sure you um, take off the thread on the Presta valve. There's a little screw there you got or a little nut. You got to take that off and then uh, you just got to work your way around with that uh, tool. And once you get the tire off halfway, you only have to take one half off, you could then pull the tube out. And next thing is obviously you just put the tube back in, but I always like to just inflate it a little bit. So it's got like a little bit of a structure to it like so. It makes it much easier to get into the tire. And again, you just have to, I, I, I always run your hand inside the tire to make sure there's nothing in there that might pop the tube, you know, so just be careful in case there's a nail. Probably better off using a glove when you do that, to be honest with you. But, and that's pretty much it. You just shove it in there, pop the tire back on, uh, working it around and use those tools to wedge it on there and pump her back up. I'm actually running 35 pounds of pressure in my tires right now. Um, I don't want to get another flat, so I have it at 35. It might be a little too hard. And there's the hole. That's what actually happened to the tube. And back out on the trail. And tire pressure is a little higher now. So it is a slightly rougher ride, I would say. But uh, traction is still really good. I'm not having too many problems riding out there. I made a bunch more trails. And uh, I gotta say, I'm actually starting to get in a little bit better shape. I'm, I could do a lot of laps now without stopping. Well, definitely not in good shape, that's for sure. But a little bit better. <laughs> so, obviously, not in good shape, but <laughs> getting better. And here's just another look at the bike now. I've been riding it for two straight weeks here. That's the brake lever, and there's a little adjustment there. So you can adjust how far the lever comes out when you squeeze it to the handlebar. I had to adjust that. And there's the rear brakes. These are the shifters. It's just the one shifter because there's only gears on the back. And that is the seat post thing. Check this out. You push that in and then the seat will go down. So you just use your body weight to push it down. And then if you're standing up, you just press that lever and the seat pops right back up. Here's a closer look at the forks. And again, this is after about two weeks of beating the crap out of this bike. That is for the air pressure for the fork. So you can add some pressure to that to adjust the sag as well. Here's what the suspension looks like a little bit better, just so you can see it from the side. And it has a lockout on the rear shock as well, so the suspension will be really tight when you have that locked. Makes it easier for riding on the street, for example. Here's just a picture of the drivetrain. Everything is working like awesome still, no problems whatsoever. Except for this stupid plastic thing. That, that, that's like flopping around. I gotta get that out of there. And I also noticed the derailleur has like a clutch mechanism that keeps the chain more taut. Now here's another look at the suspension. Just bouncing around here on the bike. And you can see it's almost like a pogo stick effect. Uh, works really well for jumping around. And um, the brakes work amazing. 
Uh, I'm really impressed with the uh, hydraulic brakes. They're so much better than the cable driven disc brake I had on my other bike. And here's just a look at the drivetrain while I'm riding. And you can see the gears work really well. You can just click the uh, down and, and they just shift down really quick, nice and smooth. Here's just an angle looking down at the tire while I'm riding. And like I said, I used to ride back in the day, so I, I was able to do stuff like this and um, a bunch of other things, but I'm just getting back into it. So still, uh, you know, a decent rider, but have a lot of practice to do. So here's another look at the suspension. I'm just bouncing here so you can see how it works, you know, actively while I'm on the bike. And uh, like I said, it works really well. Now, I'm, like, I'm sure the, you know, $5,000 bikes, the suspension's going to be way better. But for anything I've ever used, it works really good. And that is pretty much where this story comes to an end. I, I got to put the bike rack on my car. I got a cheap one off Amazon. I'll give you a link for that. And I'm bringing my old bike to work to get rid of it. I'm going to give it to a friend of mine. That's how she goes. I actually used some of the Velcro straps to strap my tire to the pedal and stuff to avoid anything from getting scratched and spinning around. I didn't want pedals hitting my car and stuff. And those Velcro straps worked quite well for that. The 2020 Siskiyou D6 mountain bike full suspension is really awesome. I think it was an excellent investment I made. I'm having an absolute blast on the bike. I just went out a couple minutes ago and went for another ride. Uh, it's like the, the most fun way to get exercise that, uh, you know, in my opinion anyway. And I'm 42 years old, so trying to get back in shape. And uh, I think it was a, a really good investment on my part. And value for the dollar, uh, I don't, really don't think you can beat it. Um, this has got to be one of the best full suspension bikes for the money out there, based on the research I've done. So for $1,200 US, you really do get a high-performance, well-made, a real world full suspension bike and again for somebody like me I'm not going crazy I'm not going to be doing 20 30 foot gap jumps or anything like that I'm going to pretty much keep both wheels on the ground most of the time I'll do some little jumps and bunny hops and things like that but I'm not looking for anything crazy I'm just looking to have a good time and also be comfortable you know I want I want to be comfortable I want to be out there on the trail and I don't want to be getting killed by all the rocks and the jostling and everything else so the suspension really helps for that and you know after using the bike for about two weeks i dialed things in a little bit i just moved the uh you know the brakes i angled them down just a little bit more um, i adjusted the suspension a little bit more just to get it fine-tuned and you know the bike's been extremely reliable other than that stupid plastic thing on the rear cassette i think i'm just going to cut that off because um, i don't have a cassette tool to take it off the right way so i think i might just cut it and just take that plastic off because that is kind of annoying but other than that, the bike is working great. I'm super happy with it. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you like this review, please be sure to let me know. Um, maybe I'll do more reviews like this. But, um, you know, I just like to review stuff that I get. And this was one of the greatest things I've gotten in a while. As far as value to the dollar to fun goes. It's, uh, you know, $1,200, the amount of fun I've gotten out of this thing. I feel like it paid for itself already and I've only had it for like two weeks. So once I go to like a mountain bike park and stuff like that and go down a ski slope or something, that's really going to be crazy fun, um, next level fun. And, you know, it's, it's nice being out in the woods too. You get that like nature reset when you're out there in the woods. It's very peaceful, especially when you're making the trails. And if you're somebody like me, midlife crisis type age, and you're looking for something fun to do, get in shape at the same time. Mountain biking is a good way to go. I'm definitely getting back into it for sure. The more I ride, the better shape I get in, and the more I'm enjoying it. I'm not getting so out of breath so quickly now. And you know, so another couple weeks and I should be uh, doing pretty well. I'm gonna leave it there. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified of more videos like this. Uh, obviously, normally I review cameras and lenses and stuff, but I'm starting to branch out and review things like this every once in a while. All right, so I really hope you guys have a great day. And if you have any questions or comments, please be sure to leave them below in the comments area. And be sure to check out Bikes Online if you're looking for a bike like this. I have no affiliation with them. I bought this bike just because it was a good deal. So I'm not, you know, I don't work for them or anything like that. I just bought the bike like a regular person. Bikes Online, if you would like to send me other bikes for review, my email is below. <laughs> All right. I will catch up with you guys next time. Have a great day. Be safe out there. Take care.